Hey guys, uh, thanks for all your comments in our last video. We read them all and we greatly appreciate you all. We have uh, begun our plan forward to secure alternative photometric data and we are waiting patiently for the inclement weather in Arizona to abate so that we can begin receiving Bruce Gary's data and graphs on this channel. Bruce Gary is a consummate professional with high integrity and his graphs and analyses are top notch. So um, another thing that this channel is considering doing is a crowdfunding campaign to pay for high quality and precise measurements of Tabby Star. These unsung amateur astronomers have uh, you know, been doing a great job and should be compensated and we plan for them to be the backbone of this channel. So guys, give us uh, your opinions on this. Would you guys be receptive to a crowdfunding campaign? Um, you know, citizen planet hunters were the ones that discovered the strangeness of this star, and it only seems fitting that we employ an amateur astronomer to continue to help us monitor and understand what's happening here. And we won't hoard or monopolize or manipulate the data, but we'll release it in both its raw and graphical forms for all to use and study. So guys, uh, for our second topic, we will show you the results of some analysis that we performed on the data of an amateur astronomer that post on AAVSO. And uh, we have been quietly monitoring the work of several of these astronomers and have our eye on one in particular. His measurements are stable, precise, and he goes by the description of LDJ. And I will withhold his name for now. So here are some pictures of his observatory. This is the front view opening. This uh, view shows the inside of the observatory. And this is uh, the telescope that he uses. And uh, this is just an outside view of the observatory. So for this particular astronomer, LDJ, we extracted all of his uh, visual magnitude, his, his V-band measurements, all the way back to September 3rd, 2016, to July 26th of this year. And here are four tables that contain his data over that period of time. And I will hold that uh, for a few more seconds so that you can take a screenshot if you wish to have this data. So we took this data and created a scatter plot, which is shown right here. The circles represent each of the data points. And here is in highlight are the two short-term dimming events that happened earlier this year. So generating a best fit curve across these data points, we get the following red curve here. So guys, as you can plainly see, the long-term accelerated dimming curve is very much alive and kicking. And this is even more independent evidence of its existence, which this channel first discovered back in May 29th of this year. Guys, we beat the pros to the punch on this one, and they just don't like it one darn bit. So it gets even better, guys. Since we have all the values and dates for each of these points on the graph, let's calculate the recent slope from this curve. These two data points fall close to the curve. One is right on, and the other is slightly higher than the curve. So we will uh, make a small adjustment on this one in just a second. So these are the dates and corresponding visual magnitude values of those two data points. And so this equates to 1.54 months between measurements. So doing the math, the slope at this point on the curve is approximately 0.39% per month. And if you consider that this data point is slightly higher than the curve, our estimate is that the instantaneous slope of this curve at this time is 0.40% per month. This is exactly what we calculated in an earlier video, which is shown right here. So guys, everything we calculated and said before still stands today. Our long-term accelerated dimming curve and corresponding equation that we use is still valid. We will convert our flux equation from a normalized flux to a visual magnitude in an upcoming video and use that one instead. So here is the superposition of the blue long-term accelerating dimming curve on an earlier version of the graph before it was changed. And this is what it looks like today after the graph was changed. 
It is the opinion of this channel that this graph no longer meets our standards anymore and will only be included when other sources are not available. This may uh, suffice in a gross sense to see short-term dimming events, but for the precision measurements that we need for this channel, this is no longer reliable. We will use AAVSO data to track and refine our long-term accelerating dimming equation in the future. Well, guys, it is a weekend, so go out and have some fun. We will see you in our next video.